Blessed is the kingdom of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord from above in the salvation of our souls. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For peace in the whole world, for the stability of the holy churches of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for those who enter it with faith, reverence, and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. For our Archbishop and Father Savas, the Honorable Presbyters, the Deacons in Christ, for all the clergy and laity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our country, the President, and all those in public service, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this parish and city, for every city and land, and for the faithful who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for favorable weather and abundance of the fruits of the earth and peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For travelers by land, sea, and air, for the sick, the suffering, the captives, and their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and distress, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Amen. Remembering our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. Lord our God, whose power is beyond compare and whose glory is beyond understanding, whose mercy is boundless and love for us is ineffable, look upon us and upon this holy house in your compassion and grant to us and those who pray with us your abundant mercy. For to you belong all glory, honor, and worship to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Amen. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Everything within me bless his holy name. Through the intercessions of the Theotokos, Savior, save us. Bless the Lord of my soul and forget not all his rewards. Prepared his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. Through the intercessions of the Theotokos, Savior, save us. Glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and ever and to the ages of the Intercessions of the Theotokos, Savior, save us. Again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. In our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary. To all the saints, let us commend ourselves to one another and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord. The kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever into the ages of ages. My soul, I shall praise the Lord while I live. I shall sing to my God as long as I exist. Save us, O Son of God, who 
rose from the dead. Save us to sing to you, alleluia. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob. His hope is in the Lord his God. So the Lord shall reign forever, your God, O Zion, to all generations. Save us, O Son of God, who rose from the dead. Save us who sing to you, alleluia. Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and ever and to the ages of ages. Amen. O monogenesios kelos tu teo, athanatos hi parchon, ke katal examenos ti actini metera sotiria, Sarkothine, et tis aios eotoku, ke ai parthenu Marias, atreptos en atropisas, stavrotis et Christe o Theos, thanato thanato patisas. In peace, let us again pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Amen. Remembering our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commit ourselves and one another in our whole life to Christ our God. For you are a good and loving God, and to you we give glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Immortal, 
You destroyed Hades with the splendor of your divinity. And when you raised the dead from the depths of darkness, all the heavenly powers shouted, O giver of life, Christ our God, glory to you. O holy apostle and evangelist Luke, intercede with our merciful God that he may grant our souls forgiveness of offenses. Together with our choir, the Apolitikian of our church. protection of Christians unshameable, intercessor to our holy maker unwavering. Reject not the prayerful cries of those who are in sin. Instead, come to us for you are good. Your loving help bring unto us who are crying in faith to you. Hasten to intercede and speed now to supplicate as a protection for all time. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For you are holy, our God, and to you we give glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit now and forever, and to the ages of ages. All together, please. Can 
Let us be attentive. The heavens declare the glory of God. Wisdom. The reading is from St. Paul's letter to the Colossians. Let us be attentive. Brethren, conduct yourselves wisely toward outsiders, making the most of the time. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer everyone. Tychios will tell you all about my affairs. He is a beloved brother and faithful minister and fellow servant in the Lord. I have sent him to you for this very purpose, that you may know how we are and that he may encourage your hearts, and with him, one Simos, the faithful and beloved brother, who is one of yourselves. They will tell you everything that has taken place. Our Stachos, my fellow prisoner, greets you, and Mark, the cousin of Barnabas, concerning whom you have received instructions, if he comes to you, receive him and Jesus, who is called Justos. These are only men of the circumcision among my fellow workers for the kingdom of God, and they have been a comfort to me. Luke, the beloved physician, and Damas greet you. Give my greetings to the brethren of Lacedosia and to Nympha and the church in her house. And when this letter has been read among you, have it also read in the church of the Lacedosians, and see that you read also the letter of Lacedosia, and say to Archippus, see that you fulfill the ministry which you have received in the Lord. I, Paul, write this greeting with my own hand. Remember my fetters. Grace be with you. Amen. Peace be to you, the reader. Wisdom arise, let us hear the Holy Gospel. Peace be with all. And with your spirit. The reading is from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Let us be attentive. The Lord said to his disciples, He who hears you hears me, and he who rejects you rejects me, and he who rejects me rejects him who sent me. The seventy returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I have given you authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. In that same hour he rejoiced in the Holy Spirit and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to babes. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. Glory to you, O Lord. Glory to you.
Good morning, everybody. What a beautiful morning it is here at Holy Trinity Church because today we are celebrating Youth Sunday. And as you know, we have been doing for the past few years one of the things amongst the various offerings that the children make today, besides doing the hospitality and the parish council work, besides providing the uh, refreshments afterwards and some items for you to take along home today to, uh, to eat and to enjoy some sweets, they also are offering the children's homilies today, three brief ones, and they're being offered by some of our students who uh, have been asked or invited and accepted to share with you some of the things that they have learned. Now, this year is, provides a nice opportunity because we have our theme, you'll see it in the bulletin for church school, and that is those three words, joyful, patient, and faithful. So our three topics for the messages today from our young people are, the first one is joyful, the second one is patient, uh, excuse me, uh, yes, patient, and the third one is faithful. So I'd like to call our first speaker up this morning, and it is from the Hope Ministry, and that is Alicia uh, Mackerel. Alicia, where are you? There you are, sweetheart. Come on up. Uh, Vasily, I need that stool. Oh, Andrew, thank you. Good morning. Thank you for coming. All right, let's put that here. Let's see if we can get your head above the... Can you step up there? Can you see everybody? You know what? Do we want to... Do we want to... Can you all see her? Is that good? We don't need a chair. Should we do a chair instead? Mom, Dad, what do you think? Is that good? Are you comfortable? All right, good. So let me get this microphone down really close to you so we can hear. And she will speak about the topic of joyful, and it is the answer to the question why. I am so happy to be back in church. Alyssa. Hi, my name is Alyssa McCrell, and I've gone to Holy Trinity my entire life. In March, everything changed for us. We can no longer go to school, play on sport teams, have birthday parties, or go to church. My family and I watched the service online. Although Father John did a great job, it just wasn't the same. I was very thankful that we had the opportunity to view the service from the internet. That feeling of walking into church, being greeted by smiles, waves, and hugs was missing. I missed lighting a candle and kissing the icons. I missed the beautiful smell of the incense in receiving Holy Communion. And I really miss seeing my church, school friends, and learning about God. I'm so happy to be back. Things are a little different with us wearing masks, but that overwhelming feeling of love and faith still greets me when I enter our church and see the familiar faces that I miss and hear Father John's powerful voice. This year, I'm really looking forward to learning more about God in third grade. I have a feeling that even though this year is a bit different, it's going to be a great year. God bless you, sweetheart. Thank you. It is going to be a great year when we have tremendous, tremendous offerings like that from our young people. Okay, Andrew, I think we can... Uh, Daniel, you won't need this, will you? I don't think so. Okay, Andrew, you can take this. Thanks. All right, our second speaker today is from our joy ministry. That's the middle group, and it is Daniel Willow. Daniel is speaking on the topic of patient. I don't know, maybe you do, actually. I want to make sure they see your beautiful face there. Okay, you can stand on that. That's good. And Daniel is speaking on the topic of patient, and his prompt was, waiting is really hard sometimes. But I know God blesses us when we are patient. Daniel, God bless you. Hello, my name is Daniel Willow, and I'll, today I'll be teaching you about patience. As we all know, we need to be patient sometimes. Either it be waiting for a friend or accepting a delay of your flight. Waiting can be hard sometimes, annoying even, but I know God's blessing us when we are patient. When we were doing online church, I was bummed out because I couldn't go in person, but I had to be patient and wait until I could go back in person. It's a blessing to be back in church, and I really appreciate being here. 
I didn't enjoy online church as much as in person, as I couldn't serve in the altar, nor could I have communion. I'm sure other people missed similar aspects of the church that were in person. But it was better when I was patient because I grew to appreciate any form of church, online or not, it's still church and that became clear to me. Patience is needed for many aspects of life, even skateboarding, for example. When you start, you think it's easy, but then you realize it's a lot harder than you think. First of all, you have to learn how to balance, which takes a few days itself, then there's learning tricks, which takes months. You have to spend a lot of time and effort, but at the end it pays off by you getting more skilled and experienced. To conclude, always be patient because it's required for almost everything. More importantly, because it enables us to see God's blessings. Father Otto, I don't think they're missing us speaking this morning, are they? These were tremendous so far. God bless you both. Thank you so much. Our third speaker this morning is from the Goya Ministry. She also happens to be the president, newly elected, of our Goya, and it is Anna Bordianu. Anna is speaking on the topic, Faithful. Many teens in my generation have lost their faith in God. This is why I never will. Anna? Good morning. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As teens in my generation approach their adult years, one of two things happen. They either grow into their faith or grow apart from their faith. Many teenagers come up with excuses such as, how can there be a God if so many bad things happen? But my friends are not faithful. Why should I be? And the commonly used phrase, I am just too busy. However, as I and many others grow into our faith as Goyans, we see these things not as excuses, but rather reasons why we need God even more. In times of uncertainty, such as the coronavirus or any other stressful event, many turn their backs on God out of anger and frustration. However, we should rather turn towards God for answers and strength to help us with our struggles. As a teenager in high school, I have experienced many hardships, such as feelings of being overwhelmed, stressed, and sad. Many times I have felt like giving up, but the one thing that kept me going was knowing that God was fighting alongside with me. I remember the nights I would spend, God, spend begging God to help me find strength. Many times I would find myself asking God why, why he would allow such burdens to be placed upon me. However, as I began to grow, I found peace in my faith. I found peace in the fact that God does everything for a reason. And I truly believe that one of the reasons I went through my struggles was for me to be here today and spread my message of love, peace, and hope that I found in my faith. Because one thing I have learned as an Orthodox Christian is not to fear my struggles, but embrace them with the help of God. For as the Bible tells us, don't be afraid of them, for the Lord your God fights for you. In times of uncertainty, God is not fighting against you, but rather he is fighting with you. So, to the people who say, how can there be a God if there are so many bad things happening? I say to them, it is not God who causes tragic things to happen. It is but our free will. But with God, there is the possibility to make the bad good again. As a teenager, I know how important it is to want to feel accepted by others, and that it is often hard to fit in. However, I challenge this by saying that if we surround ourselves with people who share our love in God, we will always be accepted. Goya has given me the opportunity to find people who are grounded in my faith and create a group that incorporates love, friendship, and Christianity into one. So, while some find themselves distancing from the church, I find myself being drawn in through Goya. Goya gives me the strength, love, and support I need for anything. It provides me with answers to life and to my faith. As I apply to colleges, many ask for the activity that is most important to me. This is a simple question with a simple answer, Goya. But as I think to myself why it is the most important activity to me, I realize that it is important because it has given me lifelong friends and faith. There are not enough hours in a day to do all the things we set out to do. However, 
when we make things a priority, we always seem to find the time. When deciding our top priorities, the number one should always be God because he gives us the tools and the strength we need to complete our everyday tasks. One way to make church a priority is by participating in Goya. Because if you have time to watch Netflix, or as my dad would say, keep a streak with your Insta friends when he actually means Snapchat, you have time to be with the people who ground you in your faith. We all have activities that help us academically and physically. We just need to find the time for activities that help us spiritually as well because who wants to nurture just their body and not their soul? So in the end, do bad things happen? Yes, but that is precisely when you need God the most, so do not run away from him. Are some of your friends not faithful? Yes, but the choice to be in Goya creates a friend group bonded in faith and love. Are we all busy? Yes, but I also know that we all have a few minutes a day to reach out and speak to God. So, as we all approach our adult years, we need not to grow away from the faith, but towards it with the support of our community, church, and Goya. Amen. Thank you so much to all of you, to Alyssa, to Daniel, and to Anna. What a tremendous collection of offerings that was. And I must say that it was a genuine reflection, a reflection of the depth of their faith and their love for God and this holy church, but a reflection of the love and the teachings and the nurture that our church school staff, the parents, and you as an entire community with which you have embraced all of them. Our children in this community know that they are loved, that they are honored, and that they have an important role in the life of the community today is a beautiful witness of that. Again, God bless you all. Thank you. Please rise. Also, before we continue, just again, a standard announcement these days, our spacing this way in rows is automatic, but we ask you also to make sure that you are respecting spacing between the various groups so that we may continue to abide by our metropolis safe practices. Thank you. Wisdom and grant that always guarded by your power, we may give glory to you, to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Let us pray to the Lord. No one bound by worldly desires and pleasures is worthy to approach to honor your ministry to the King of glory. To serve you as great and awesome even for the heavenly powers, but because of your ineffable and immeasurable love for us and with mankind, you became man without alteration or change. You have served as a high priest and Lord of all and trusted this thus the celebration of this liturgical sacrifice without the shedding of blood. You alone, Lord our God, rule over all things in heaven and on earth. You are seated on the throne of the cherubim, the Lord of the seraphim, and the King of Israel. You are alone a holy and dwell among your saints. You are alone and good and ready to hear. Therefore, I implore you, look upon me, your sinful and unworthy servant, and cleanse my soul and heart from evil consciousness. Enable me by the power of your Holy Spirit that best with the grace of priests that I may stand before your holy table and celebrate the mystery. Of your holy and pure body and your precious blood, to I come with bowed head and pray to not to Christ, our God of the offering, the offer of the one who receives and distributed unto you, you glory together with your eternal Father and your all holy, good, and life creating spirit, now and ever into the ages of ages. Amen. We who mystically represent the cherubim sing the thrice holy hymn to the life giving Trinity. Let us lay aside the cares of this life that we receive the King of all invisibly escorted by angelic hosts. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. We who mystically represent the cherubim sing the thrice holy hymn to the life giving Trinity. Let us lay aside all the cares of this life. That mercy of the King of all and his grace glory by the Holy Spirit. Ita hieruvi mysticosi conizum desketis opiotria de ton trisa unimum prasadum espasim viam viaticina potamata merinan ostum asileam tonolin prodexomenites angelicas 
Auratos do Riforumon Taxasin, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Come, let us worship God our King and bow down before Him. Defte Proskinisum, Ke Prospesum, Christoto Vasilike Theoimon. Come, let us worship and bow down before Christ Himself, our King and our God. Having beheld the resurrection of Christ, let us worship the Holy Lord Jesus, the only sinless one. We venerate your cross, O Christ, and we praise and glorify your holy resurrection. You are our God, we none other than you. We call upon your holy name. Come, all you faithful, let us worship the holy resurrection of Christ. Behold, through the cross, joy has come to all the world. Ever blessing the Lord, let us praise his resurrection. For enduring the cross for us, he has destroyed death by death. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your great mercy. According to the multitude of mercies, blot out my transgression, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before you, against you, you only by sin, and done that which is evil in your sight, and been found justified when you speak, and blameless when you are judged. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity and sin, and I did sin, You shall purge with discipline, and you shall wash me. And I shall be whiter than snow. You shall make me hear sounds of joy and gladness at the bones which are broken and rejoice. Turn your face away from my sins and blot all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Of hope and the spirit. Then I shall teach you and crush as your ways. And the sinner shall be converted to the Silia of to Pandote Ninke Keis to Seonas Toneo. kingdom always now and forever and unto the ages of ages may the Lord our God remember your priesthood in his kingdom always now and ever unto the ages of ages Des angelicus aorados foriforum
Let us complete our prayer to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the precious gift here presented, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for those who entered with faith, reverence, and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and distress, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Amen. For a perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless day, let us ask the Lord. Grant this, o Lord. For an angel of peace, a faithful guide, a guardian of our souls and bodies, let us ask the Lord. Grant For forgiveness and remission of our sins and transgressions, let us ask the Lord. Grant this, o Lord. For all that is good and beneficial to our souls and for peace in the world, let us ask the Lord. Grant this, o Lord. For the completion of our lives in peace and repentance, let us ask the Lord. Grant this, o for a Christian end to our lives, peaceful without shame and suffering, and for a good account before the awesome judgment seat of Christ, let us ask the Lord. Grant this, o Lord. Remembering our most holy, pure, blessed, most and glorious holy, Lady, the Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary, Mary, with all the saints, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. Lord God Almighty, you are alone or holy. You accept the sacrifice of praise from those who call upon you with their whole heart. Receive also the prayer of us sinners and let it reach your holy altar. Enable us to be bring before you gifts and spiritual sacrifices for our sins and for the transgressions of the people. Make us worthy to find grace in your presence that our sacrifice may be pleasing to you and that your good and gracious spirit may abide with us, with the gifts here presented and with all your people. Through the mercies of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed, together with your all-holy, good and life-creating Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Amen. Peace be with all. And with your Let us love one another that with one mind we may confess. Lord, my strength, the Lord is my rock, my fortress, I and my deliverer. You, Christ is in our midst. Oh, Lord, my strength. Oh, Lord, my strength. The Lord, the Lord is the doors in wisdom let us be attentive I believe, I believe in one God, God Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth and of all things visible and invisible and in one Lord Jesus Christ the only begotten Son of God begotten of the Father before all ages light of light true God of true God begotten not created of one essence with the Father through whom all things were made who for us man and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit in the Virgin Mary, and became man. He was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate, and suffered and was buried, and he rose on the third day according to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom shall have no end. And in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the, Lord, the Creator of life, who proceeds from the Father, who together, together with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who spoke, spoke to the through prophets. the prophets. In one, one holy Catholic and apostolic, apostolic church, church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life, life of the ages to come. come. Amen.
Let us stand well, let us stand in awe. Let us be attentive that we may present the holy offering in peace. Mercy and peace, a sacrifice of praise. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. Let us lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord. proper and right to sing to you, to bless you, praise you, thank you, and worship you in all places of your dominion, for you are God ineffable beyond comprehension, invisible beyond understanding, existing forever and always the same. You and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit, you brought us into being out of nothing, and when we fell, you raised us up again. You did not cease doing everything until you led us to heaven and granted us your kingdom to come. For all these things we thank you and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit for all things that we know and do not know, for blessings seen and unseen that have been bestowed upon us. We also thank you for this liturgy which you are pleased to accept from our hands, even though you are surrounded by thousands of archangels and tens of thousands of angels, by the cherubim and the seraphim, six-winged, many-eyed, soaring with their wings, singing the victory hymn, proclaiming, crying out and saying, Together with these blessed powers, merciful Master, we also proclaim and say, You are holy and most holy, you and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit. You are holy and most holy and sublime is your glory. You so loved your world that you gave your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. He came and fulfilled the divine plan for us on the night he was delivered up, or rather when he gave himself up for the life of the world. He took bread in his holy, pure, and blameless hands, gave thanks, blessed, sanctified, broke, and gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you for the forgiveness of sins. Likewise, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, Drink of it, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Remembering, therefore, this command of the Savior and all that came to pass for our sake the cross, the tomb, the resurrection on the third day, the ascension to heaven, the enthronement at the right hand of the Father, and the second and glorious coming. We offer to you these gifts from your own gifts in all and for all. Das eikt und son si prosferum en catapanda que dia panda. Please bow your heads to the end of the next hymn. Once again we offer you this spiritual worship without the shedding of blood. We ask, pray, and entreat you. Send down your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts here presented. God be merciful to me, a sinner, and save me. O Dios, God be merciful to me, a sinner, and save me. And make this bread the precious body of your Christ. Amen. And that which is in this cup, the precious blood of your Christ. Amen. Changing them by your Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Amen.
so that they may be to those who partake of them for vigilance of soul, forgiveness of sins, communion of your Holy Spirit, fulfillment of the kingdom of heaven, confidence before you and not in judgment or condemnation. And then we offer you the spiritual worship for those who are right here. Especially for our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos and the Ever Saint John Virgin the Baptist, Mary, Father, the Holy Ghost, most honored apostles, for Saint Luke, the Apostle of Antioch, and Marinos, the Martyr, whose memories we celebrate this day, all the saints, the Blessed, 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 the Above all, remember, Lord, our Archbishop and Father Savas, grant that he may serve your holy churches in peace, keep him safe, honorable, and healthy for many years, rightly teaching the word of your truth. Remember also, Lord, those whom each of us calls to mind and all your people. And all your people. And grant that with one voice and one heart we may glorify and praise your most honored and majestic name, of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. The mercy of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, be with all of you. And with your spirit. <clears throat> Having remembered all the saints, let us again in peace pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the precious gifts offered and consecrated, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. That our loving God, who has received them at his holy, heavenly, and spiritual altars, and offering a spiritual fragrance, may in return send upon us divine grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Lord have mercy. Having prayed for the unity of the faith and for the communion of the Holy Spirit, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, o Lord. We give thanks to you, invisible King, by your infinite power you have created all things and by your great mercy you have brought everything from nothing into being. We entrust you, loving Master, our whole life and hope we ask, pray, and entreat, make us worthy to partake of your heavenly and awesome mysteries from this holy and spiritual table. With a clear conscience for the remission of sins, the forgiveness of transgressions, the communion of your Holy Spirit, inheritance of the kingdom of heaven, confidence before you, and not in judgment or condemnation. And make us worthy, Master, with confidence and without fear of condemnation, to dare call you the heavenly God, Father, and to say...
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Paterimon, o endi suranis, aiastito tonomasu, el teto i vasiliasu, genitito totalimasu, o sen uranoke epitisis, ton artonimon trepiusion, dosim in simeron, que afesiminta o folimeta imon, o skemi safiement sefilete simon, que mi is nengis mas espirasmon, alaris imas potoponiru. Ότι σου έστεινε η βασιλεία και η δύναμη και η δόξα του πατρό και του ιού και του αγίου πνεύματο νυν και αή και στου αιώνα των αιώνων. Αμήν. πάση. Τα σκεφαλά σημών το κυρίω κλείνω Master, look down from heaven upon those who have bowed their heads before you. They have not bowed before flesh and blood, but before you, the awesome God. Therefore, Master, guide the course of our life for our benefit according to the need of each of us. Sail with those who sail, travel with those who travel, and heal the sick, physician of our souls and bodies. By the grace, mercy, and love for us of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed, together with your all holy, good, and life giving Spirit, now and forever into the ages of ages. Lord Jesus Christ, who hears from your holy dwelling place in the glorious throne of your kingdom, you are enthroned on high with the Father, and also invisibly present among us. Come and sanctify us, and let your pure body and your precious blood be given to us by your mighty hand. And to us, to all your people, God be merciful to me. God be merciful to me, as you may Let us be attentive, the holy gifts for the holy people of God. The Lamb of God is broken, distributed, broken, but not divided. He is for everyone. So they sanctify those who partake of him. The fullness of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed is the fervor of your saints, always known ever into the ages of ages. Amen. The warmth of faith, filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe and confess, Lord, that you are truly the Christ, the Son of the living God, who came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the first. I also believe that this is truly your pure body, and that this is truly your precious blood. Therefore, I pray to you, have mercy upon me, and forgive my transgressions, voluntary and involuntary, in word and deed, known and unknown, and make me worthy without condemnation, to partake of your pure mysteries for the forgiveness of sins and life eternal. Amen. So I, whom unworthy, enter into the splendor of your saints. If I dare to enter the bridal chamber, my clothing will accuse me, since it is not a wedding garment. Being bound up, I shall be cast out by the angels. In your love, Lord, cleanse your soul and save me. Loving Master, Lord Jesus Christ, my God, let not these holy gifts be to my condemnation, because of my worthiness, but for the cleansing and sanctification of soul and body, and the pledge of the future life and kingdom, it is good for me to cling to God and place in Him the hope of my salvation. 
Receive me today, Son of God, as a partaker of your mystical supper. I will not reveal your mysteries to your adversaries, nor will I give you a kiss as to Judas. But as a thief, I confess to you, Lord, remembering your kingdom. Behold, I approach Christ, our mortal King of God.
a reminder, please, during our current adjusted practices that we would like the church school staff to come up first, as always, to get to their classes first, but then please remain where you are, and the students will all be dismissed then so that they may go to their classes unencumbered. Following that, then there, another round will be made to dismiss the rest of the congregation. Thank you for your cooperation. With the fear of God, with faith and with love, draw near. God save your people and bless your inheritance.
exalted, O God, above the heavens, and may your glory be above the earth. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, and may your glory be above all the earth. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, and may your glory be above all the earth. Blessed is our God. Always, now, and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Let us be attentive, having partaken of the divine, holy, pure, immortal, heavenly life, giving in us mysteries of Christ. Let us worthily give thanks to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Having prayed for a perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless day, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, o Lord. We thank you, loving Master, benefactor of our souls, that on this day you have made us worthy once again of your heavenly and awesome mysteries. Direct our ways in your right path, establish us firmly in your fear, guard our lives and make our endeavors safe the prayers and supplications of the glorious Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary and of all the saints. For you are our sanctification, and to you we give glory, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Let us depart in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, bless those who praise you and sanctify those who trust in you. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Protect the whole body of your church. Sanctify those who love the beauty of your house. Glorify them in return by your divine power and do not forsake us who hope in you. Grant peace to your world, to your churches, to the clergy, to those in public service, to the armed forces and to all your people. For every good and perfect gift is from above, coming from you, the Father of lights. To you we give glory, thanksgiving and worship. To the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Praise our God, you are the Father, and the Holy Spirit, and the dispossession of the Father. Your heart to join in this holy name, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Good morning. Please be seated. <clears throat> well, it's Youth Sunday, and here we are. We had three messages from the youngest of our youth groups. We had our hope the youngest ones, and then we had the joy group, the third, the third through sixth grade, and then we had Goya, the seventh through twelfth grade, so it would make sense that the final message of the day would be delivered by the next branch up, and that would be the young adults. Unfortunately, uh, we didn't think to do that this year, but it did plant in my mind the uh, thought that we should probably do that next year, so Two weeks shy of my 61st birthday, here I am representing the young adults. <laughs> and uh, so the final message of the day. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Brethren, conduct yourselves wisely towards outsiders, making the most of the time. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer everyone today's epistle. According to a food mythbusters site, despite the simplicity of the actual gesture, that of actually adding just the right quantity of salt is one of the most difficult and risky operations in cooking. 
No need for lengthy explanations as to why. Even a bit too much of salt in a dish risks compromising the flavor altogether. I know the Greek yayas make this particularly challenging because they say you just put a scoop of this or a kufta of that or a pinch of that and uh, somehow you just need to learn by watching, right? Anyone who has worked long and hard on a dish only to discover at the end that you've added too much salt is painfully familiar with that mistake. And usually, there's just no recovery. So today's epistle from St. Paul, which tells us, let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, can be quite a challenge. What's he really saying? Well, it's not a cooking lesson. But like a well-prepared dish that can easily be ruined by too much salt, our relationships with others can also be ruined if we don't take care what we pour into them. And he addresses it with two angles, what we do and what we say. So in that spirit, please join me today in looking at the kind of relationships Christians are called to have with others. This might be an especially welcome exercising in the middle of a political season when it sometimes seems in the heat of competition that nobody has anything good to say about anyone else. I promise you that will not be our topic today. Rather, we'll be about as far away from it as possible as we draw these three simple bits of guidance from Elder Emilianos of Simonopetra Monastery in Manathos. In his book, The Mystical Marriage, he comments on the writings of St. Maximus the Confessor. And despite its title, it's not about marriage. It's about spiritual life. And when it comes to spiritual life, as we'll see, it's impossible to explore it while living in this world without being affected by our relationships with others. The elder is really quite upfront about this. In honesty, he says, for the most part, the greatest spiritual problem facing those living in the world is other people. Yeah, you heard me, other people. That is not what you would expect to hear from a respected spiritual guide, is it? I mean, we're usually told, accept responsibility for your own actions, don't blame others, and don't find excuses for our own failures, right? So how can he say that our biggest problem is other people. How could that be? In truth, he's not giving us a pass and allowing us to blame others for our sometimes awful behaviors. He's actually recognizing that relationships with others that can create challenges for us are always there, but that doesn't mean that the problem is theirs. It's actually still ours. The relationship just reveals the problem. Here's the rest of the quote. If I then, living in the world together with other people, I must be prepared to not be bothered or troubled by them. If I have the right attitude, the right frame of mind, and the right respect to them, I'll be able to live a life free of temptations and remain untroubled by what goes on around me. Think about that for a moment. A life free of temptations and not bothered by the things that go on around me. Don't you just want to go, ah, that would be so nice. It's actually possible. Today's with epistle then combined with the elder addresses the responsibility of our conduct with others and the need to season our conversations with just the right amount of salt and it finds its way right back to where it belongs in our hands. So before going further into the advice of the elder and what he says about all this, let's make it, as we like to do often, very personal. Theories and theologies and grand ideas just don't work. Bringing it home in our life does. So I want you to do this for the rest of the message. Think of one of the more difficult relationships in your life. Maybe it's somebody you've had a falling out with, an unpleasant conversation with, someone you simply walked away from leaving the problem 
unresolved. It's so easy to just say, we're only human, and to blame the other person. But that doesn't solve anything, does it? It just gives us a pass, or at least an excuse, or at least for the time being. Ever been in one of those situations and said to yourself, ah, oh, if only he hadn't, or if only she wasn't so? You're not alone. This is really an ancestral problem, reaching all the way back to the Garden of Eden. And by the way, I'm not blaming anybody for this. We're just doing a little history here. When the Lord asked Adam why he violated the commandment not to eat of the tree, and Adam responded, the woman you gave me, by the way, that's twice blaming different two different people, <laughs> or God and a person. The woman you put me here with, she gave me some fruit from the tree, and I ate it. Now, we might think such a predisposition is sown into our nature. Again, the I'm only human excuse. But understood correctly, that's really our fallen nature. Our original design doesn't do that. To be human, truly human doesn't blame others, because being truly human is more fully realizing the image and likeness of God in all. And God, as the scriptures tell us, is love. So what to do about it? Elder Milianos offers three simple suggestions. Simple, not easy. Let's take a look at them one at a time. He starts with this. First, we should be careful not to disturb or upset our relations with others even a little. I told you it was simple, but not easy, right? We should not allow ourselves, he says, to be swayed by how much we like or don't like a person, which indicates the degree to which our stance is dependent on that person. Imagine what that goal would do to the relationship that I asked of you to think of a moment ago. To have a better relationship with others, we must be intentional about them. I must want them to be positive and choose not to allow that intent to be swayed. Why? Because relationships are complex. They can change in a moment if we let them. But that doesn't alleviate us of our Christian calling to see the image of God in others and to allow the image of God to be seen by others in us. I can be troubled, the elder says, become angry, lose my inner peace, or otherwise be thrown off balance because I have no control over what other people say or do to me. Hmm. It is, however, in our power to choose not to surrender that authority over our feelings, our words, and our deeds to others. It's simple, as I said. It's a choice, but not an easy one. Why is it so hard? We see that in the second piece of advice. The second thing we need to do is judge ourselves very strictly, he says, in order to see if we are being motivated by self-will, selfish desire, or some other ulterior motive. He says this to make sure that these relationships are not sabotaged by an unwelcome third-party intruder, and that is our ego. When ego becomes the controlling factor, the elder says, our lives are not governed by the Holy Spirit because we are not united to the will of God. This self-check mechanism needs to constantly ask, who is first in this relationship, any relationship that we have? Is it me? Is it what I like, what I want, what interests me, what furthers my desires, feeds my pride? We are always, the elder says, when we do that, wallowing in self-serving thoughts. Quote, like a pig who wants nothing more than to return to his little puddle of mud, unquote. We have the ability, we have the power, and we have the calling to choose another way, my friends. When I sense this happening, says the elder, I will not act on its demands. I will remain tranquil no matter what is going on around me. I will know true joy and not the impulsive and hollow responses of either happiness or sorrow triggered by 
fleeting and ever-changing circumstances. That's a high call indeed. So how can we get there? Let's finish up with his third and most important piece of advice of all. And it's the one that powers the other two. The first and foremost relationship in our life. Let us seek moments, he says, when we can be alone with God. Since these are the most precious and substantive moments of our life. This, this relationship with God, he reminds us, is the one from which every other relationship in our life springs. Spouses, children, family, friends, co-workers, checkout counter people, and everybody else that we meet. Unwinding back through the first two challenges, it becomes clear that our relationship with God motivates us to be intentional about our relationship with others. Because how we relate to others demonstrates how we relate to God. In John 1, 4, 20, the, epistle, the apostle says, if someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he's a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? And then moving back up to the first point, that intentional effort at good relations with all others will call us to carefully measure the deeds and the words that come out of our mouth and the ones that form our relationships, eventually making us really good chefs who know just the right amount of salt to add. It's not easy, but you can do this. And imagine the life you'll have when you do. Because even though it might seem tough, What's impossible with man is possible with God. Love intentionally, pray often, and season to taste. Amen. Please rise. Let us pray to the Lord. the blessing of the Lord and his mercy come upon you through his divine grace and love always now and ever and to the ages of ages Amen. glory to you Christ our God and no hope glory to you may Christ our true God who rose from the dead have mercy on us and save us as a good loving and merciful God through the prayers of his most holy and pure mother the power of the precious and life-giving cross the protection of the honorable bodiless powers of heaven the supplications of the holy glorious prophet and foreigner John the Baptist, the holy glorious apostles, the holy God-bearing fathers, the holy victorious martyrs, of the holy righteous ancestors of God, Joachim and Anna, Saint Luke the apostle and evangelist, and Marinos the martyr whose memories we celebrate this day, our father among the saints, John Christus the Archbishop of Constantinople and of all the saints. Through the prayers of our holy fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save us. and protect all of you. Good morning. Please be seated. Ready? All right. Come on up. So before we go into any announcements or finishing up the rest, uh, we are going to today install the officers of the new term for Argoya, and I invite them to come forward, please. And as Father Radu holds the gospel, I'm going to ask you to each place your right hand on it. Come forward. 
And repeat after me, I am going to say the word I, and you repeat the word I, and then add your name, and then just repeat the phrases afterwards. Okay. I, I, do solemnly affirm that I will uphold the teachings, traditions, worship, and moral principles of the Greek Orthodox Church, and that I will fulfill faithfully and sincerely the duties and obligations required of an officer of Goya. May God be my health. Okay. I'm going to have you turn around and we'll grab a photo here with you all. Uh, let's see. Let's do this. Put yourselves a little bit distance apart. And leave a gap in the middle here. Right there. Okay. And for sake of our picture, I think you can just pull your mask off a second and then put them back on before you leave. Okay. Ready? Big smiles. Okay, thank you. Masks on, off you go. All right. <laughs> Next. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't, hold on a second. I didn't announce you. Come here, so come back. Come here a second. I, I'm just got bouncing too many balls up here this morning. Here, just stand right in the front there and wave when I mention your name. So our president for this year is Anna Bordianu, who offered a really nice talk this morning, as you all heard. Our vice president is Ekaterini Valouris. Our treasurer is Sophia Mellis. We've reorganized the officers for the remainder of the officers and kind of put them in functional roles instead of sort of those old official titles. So this year, our communications coordinator is Themi Valoris, who is not here. He's probably watching online. We wave, Themi, Themi, hi, we miss you today. Okay, activities coordinator is Andrew Mellis, and our outreach coordinator, Dimitri Marsh. Give our Goya officers a nice hand, please. They do such good work. And they've really spearheaded a really nice Youth Sunday for you today uh, and today in the refreshments and afterwards. So I'm going to let you go out and get your work done because I know Prez is waiting for you. So very good. Yep, there she is waiting for you. So today, our Goya, you see in the flyer in your bulletin, is offering their fall festival. And it's a little different than it was before. They've made it kind of, you know, in contemporary fashion, uh, safe practices and so forth. So all of the things are already pre-packaged. So they've got a lunch package. They've got, uh, I think, an apple one, a pumpkin one, and another sweets one. And they're available. You can just go into the gallery. There's four different tables in four different areas or five different tables, whatever it is. And uh, so if you can do something to support them, take them home, enjoy it with your family, that's great. And we thank all the Goya families that have participated in that. Also, on the way through, our bookstore is open, and Connie has brought in a lot of really nice things lately. If you're thinking of Christmas already, it's a great place to stop by. This Wednesday, you'll see in the bulletin, including that special little icon, we are celebrating liturgy for the first time for St. John of Monemvasia. Some of you may remember that back on August 23rd, one of our sermons for the um, summer series was on St. John, and what an incredible story of a 14-year-old martyr for the faith. So taking off on that and combining that with Youth Sunday as well, what a great opportunity to offer a service in honor of him as we do for saints. So I'm really asking parents, uh, come. If you're not working, if you're able to come, please come and be here. Ask for the prayers of that incredibly strong and faithful servant of Christ who didn't even deny his faith up until the last moment of his life, even through all the tortures. Come and ask for that saint's prayers during the liturgy as we honor him as we should. So, and then if any of the children are able to come, if they're not actually in school, uh, we would uh, encourage them to do that as well. The uh, pastries, uh, the, excuse me, the spandagopita teropita are continuing. Uh, they've slowed down a little bit, honestly, so if you haven't gotten anything and you want to look ahead for the holidays, uh, get them while they're still there because our goal is obviously to uh, have all of it out the door and on people's tables and in people's homes. Uh, and again, they make really nice gifts too. The big new announcement, which was last week, 
and it did go online, by the way, as announced, our seminar, our forum on racism, A View from the Heart. It's a really, really nice opportunity for us within the context of our Christian community to raise this important topic. And you'll see the speakers list. We've got professionals and Orthodox Christians from all over. But what's unique about this is it's not a civic forum. It is not a, a, a uh, political policy statement. It is nothing of the sort. This is helping us understand the view from the heart of people who from within the church have experienced this and their response to it and what they can share to help shape and to help form and inform our own view from our own heart on an important issue that really affects a lot of people. So you can participate online. We've had quite a few people signing up already. There is a limit, though. So if you want to come in person, sign up soon. It's online here. Uh, or you can call the church office if you don't have a computer. And also it's available uh, online. Yes, it's in person. And it's also available simulcast online. All right. Last, but certainly not least, and in fact, it's last, and I'm going to ask forgiveness for, for it being way overdue. Uh, you know, when we celebrate our graduation Sunday, oftentimes we like to recognize the staff as well. This year, we were barely able to do anything. I'm not even going to go into why. It just goes without saying. We're all under these circumstances right now. But one of the ones that we absolutely needed to honor, and we're still going to do today, even though it's kind of out of... Uh, context here, but it's perfect in Youth Sunday, is honor one of our longest standing teachers in probably the history of this parish who finished her last year of teaching this past, uh, this, pa this year actually, in this spring. Um, from the best of our recollection, unless I can be corrected, she started in 1997 and went to 2019, so you do the math on that because that looks like about 22 years to me. If you take those 22 years and multiply by an average class side of about six people, six young children, uh, you're talking over 150 students, and that eventually really covers the generation passing through this class, through this, the, her class, that is now working and supporting and, and, and um, uh, not only growing up as young children now, uh, older children, but also are the young adults of our generation who 22 years ago were in her class. So, Penny Georgiatis, if you could come forward, please. Thank you. We would like to take the opportunity to thank you. With a small token of appreciation and our great thanks for everything that you have done for Holy Trinity Church and its beautiful children for all these years, there's probably, as I think of it, no better Sunday to do this than on Youth Sunday because Penny's efforts really, um, uh, really embody the love that this parish has for children, the incredible sacrifices that our staff and our other people make to bring these children into the life of Christ. God bless you. May you have the joy for many years to come of seeing the ones that started out this big grow into teenagers still in the life of the church, young adults still in the life of the church, on the parish council, in the Philoptikos, on the festival committee, and in every other possible way of life. And what a beautiful testimony. Could you ask for a better one than the one sitting right over there? Because her daughter Maria, who was one of her students along with my children, President I's children, she is now a Sunday school teacher as well. So congratulations, Maria, for following in these beautiful footsteps. Congratulations again, Penny. Father Rado, come on over. I think so, for the picture. Okay, there you go. God bless you. I would hug you if I could, but you know. Okay. <laughs> God bless. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, any other questions? Uh, give us just a moment, we'll get things ready here and we will dismiss. We're gonna ask you to go, come up the center as you're dismissed. Father Rado will be on one side, I'll be on the other side, you'll just receive the blessing and then go into the gallery. Even if you're not going to coffee hour, I would ask you please, and we are having coffee hour, I'd ask you please just kind of casually pass through the gallery, please support our kids. The, they do so much for the life of this community, but. We need to do a lot for them as well. So do what you can to support them. Take something home. If you don't eat the stuff, take it to a friend. Give it to a neighbor. Give, uh, to exercise some Christian hospitality and outreach. Okay. Thank you.